There are many gems from ancient architecture which can be found nestled amongst the mountains of Peru. One form of these, in which is a particularly fascinating mystery, is the different types and sizes of polygonal masonry found throughout this incredibly ancient landscape. One such site, once named by the Inca after the site, namely Rimac Tabo, was Lima Tabo, now popularly known as Terawazi. We feel the reason why this site is rarely mentioned, like the many other archaeological and historical anomalies we share on our channel, rarely visited or indeed studied, is due to its truly remarkable, and we feel, almost unique polygonal methodology, which can still be found within the walls that make up this little publicly shared ruin, in addition to its seemingly impossible nature, a mystery of construction no one to this day seems to be able to decipher. Found some 80 kilometers west of Cusco, the site was used in antiquity as a ceremonial center and a resting place for the Inca Chasquis. Known as legendary Inca runners, ones who would deliver messages by foot throughout these mountainous regions over long distances at incredible speed. Yet with all the other remarkable polygonal masonry found throughout Peru, we feel that this site was merely adapted by the Inca, and due to its remarkable location and the aforementioned unique polygonal stonework present, was also seen by the Inca as a significant location. The design of the site itself is particularly peculiar, and it does indeed appear to have once been a ceremonial site of some kind, perhaps a tomb. Yet what sort, or indeed how these polygonal sites were once constructed, remains a complete mystery, one which we find highly compelling. Thanks to improvements in modern archaeological technologies, and indeed the evolution of satellite resolution imagery of our spinning living blue marble, we are fortunately entering an era where thanks to penetrative strata photography, the last remaining legacies of what we have long claimed would be found, that of once highly capable global lost civilization or possibly many. And yet another proof of this hypothesis has recently been rediscovered in Iran. A gigantic artificial wall, measuring approximately 71 miles in length, extending from the mountains of Bamu to an area near the town of Jamarg, Iran, has been exposed. To put this ancient feat into perspective, computer systems have estimated that more than 1 million cubic meters of stone would have had to have been quarried, transported, and placed where they now lay, and this is a mere remnant of its past grandeur. Quote, With an estimated volume of 1 million cubic meters of stone, its construction would have required abundant resources, this in terms of labor, materials, and tremendous toil and time, wrote Sajad Alibagi. PhD of the Archaeological Department of the University of Tehran, in an article published in the journal Antiquity. Although the existence of the wall, long claimed as unknown to mainstream archaeology, those who have lived nearby for millennia have known about its existence all along, knowing it as Gari Wall or Gari Chen Wall. The Venture Party state that due to the wall's poor state of conservation, the researchers are not sure who built the structure and for what purpose. In fact, they are not even sure of its exact width and height. The best estimate is about 4 meters wide and 3 meters high. Its exact purpose remains a complete mystery, one which we find highly compelling. When within this modern world of academic study, a ruin is found, a ruin of such astonishing feature or size, one which is clearly an out-of-place artifact within the realm of its accompanying modern paradigm. No matter how amazing, how historically important, due to its sheer inexplicability, one will rarely hear about it in popular debate. And one such ruin is Kat Shibib. The archaeological site was first identified by British diplomat Sir Alec Kirkbride in 1948. An ancient wall, over 93 miles long, 
whose origins are predictably unknown. Ever since its initial discovery, a range of disciplines, including archaeologists, scientists, and anthropologists, have studied the wall. Yet the date of the Khat Shabib's construction, however, is still claimed as unknown, regardless of it also being claimed as, quote, widely debated by archaeologists. Regardless of this claim, many will have never heard of this spectacular ancient ruin, a reality we claim not by coincidence, but design. Recent study of the wall by the Aerial Archaeology and Jordan Project have found that it runs north-northeast, south-southwest, spanning a total unbroken distance of 66 miles. However, they also discovered sections where two run parallel, this for an additional substantial distance. Quote, If we add the spurs and stretches of parallel wall, the total length would be about 150 kilometers or 93 miles, wrote David Kennedy, a professor at the University of Western Australia, and Rebecca Banks, a research assistant at Oxford University, in a paper published recently in the journal Zeitschrift for Orient Archaeology. It is unquestionably a remarkable ancient ruin, one evident of a once highly capable, yet now lost, civilization. It is a ruin which we find highly compelling. There are countless ancient sites found all over the planet that are not only far older than current academically claimed by individuals funded to come up with specifically permitted dates for their creation, selling one's integrity in favor of financial securities and an authoritative position within society, offered to them in return for their obedient deceits. Like a mule guided by a carrot, these individuals not only fear losing such reputations and handsome incomes if one were to tell the truthful story regarding said sites, but they unquestionably turn a blind eye to the many areas that I cover, which are often not only implausible to state where the work of the particular permitted re-inhabitants placed much closer to us within history, but to suggest that such ancestors were capable of said feats is simply a preposterous claim. They often knowingly and deliberately overlook such features, due to their lack of any plausible explanation for such accomplishments. As such, with many ancient sites simply ignored or are disguised as closed book cases, with a dull, deliberately disinteresting tale of origin. These academics have some of the most intimate access to these ruins, yet deny the world's population a true account of said relics. For to suggest that a civilization less advanced than us accomplished the placement of megaliths far into the thousands of tons precisely atop one another with awe-inspiring stonework details and polygonal brickwork seemingly created like a puzzle of unique pieces, among many other baffling features, I feel is a proof of a deliberate agenda-driven conspiracy concealing said site's true origins. These unexplainable anomalies, the main reason why said individuals perceive me as a threat, not only to their funding, but also their positions of trusted authority within modern society. For the truths I tell, due to the inexplicable nature of their existence and their lack of exposure within academic studies, expose the field as a funded organized group of deceivers. These features are simply impossible for them to explain. Yet they continue to claim that they were built by people who were undeniably incapable of such feats. This is why many unexplainable artifacts simply vanish, and why many ancient sites are not only brushed under the proverbial carpet, but said features overlooked, ignored, and not mentioned at all. And our next relic is no exception. Many people have heard of the Great Wall of China, one of the only ancient ruins which is so large it can be seen from space. A very famous wall. Yet an even greater number of people are unaware of another great wall which can be found within India. Successfully overlooked by modern historians and antiquarians alike, this wall, known as the Kumpalgar, has been claimed to be merely a recently created ruin. Yet I feel, just like the many other ancient ruins found around the globe, is far older than currently claimed. It is of an astonishing size. 
and a number of alternative, so-called fringe researchers, which academics like to derogatorily call them, have found substantial evidence that not only is the upper layers far older than claimed, but the entire wall sits upon a foundation immensely older than the wall we see today. A foundation that many have concluded is so old that it had simply turned to dust through the eons, rebuilt at a currently unknown time within antiquity. The wall stretches an astonishing 22 miles, and once protected hundreds of extremely ancient dwellings, and measured at over 40 feet thick, to suggest that such a feat could have been accomplished by our more recent ancestors, who the founders of mainstream academia permits, is a tough posit to agree with. For if such claim were true, why is the wall seemingly ignored by modern history? I feel the reason the wall has been successfully kept largely unknown is due to the fact that if openly studied and widely known of, more people would research such site eventually realizing, like many before them, that the wall is far older than currently claimed, and possesses such enormous amounts of stone, along with an immensely older foundation, that current claims of its origins and age are simply incorrect, and a clear attempt to shrug off this astonishing structure as a reasonably modern creation, which they hope will not be looked at closely. An attempt to close the book on a possible antediluvian ruin which many people as a result told with a dull deceptive history for its existence, which not only stifles one's interest regarding the wall's origin, but deters the curious from ever investigating the wall's truly astonishing nature. A motivation which I feel is the main driving force behind its lack of public exposure. Who rebuilt the Great Wall of India? How old is its far older, highly eroded foundation? The Great Wall of India was an astonishing feat of ancient engineering, a feat that academia would prefer stay largely unknown, a reality which I find highly compelling. Nix was at one time the official meeting place of the Athenian Democratic Assembly of Ancient Greece. In the earliest days of Athenian democracy, the ecclesia met in the agora. However, Sometime within the early 5th century, the meeting place was moved to a new meeting place, which came to be called Nix, from the Greek word meaning tightly packed together. This word, we feel, was more than likely inspired by the astonishing polygonal masonry, so often conveniently absent any of academia explanations as to the origins of such sites. How can individuals tasked with establishing an accurate understanding as to the origins of such sites, seemingly overlook that which cannot be explained. It is clear to us that a conspiracy has befallen the academically established historical timeline of our species, this in favor of a perceived all-knowing rather than that which they truly are, rather out of their depth. The Nix Wall being one of the most compelling and enigmatic features of the ancient ruin. Polygonal masonry of extraordinary size, with a construction method indicative of a lost technology and thus lost civilization. Excavations at the site began in 1910 by the Greek Archaeological Society, which definitely confirmed the site as the Nix. Interestingly, on the western end of the site is an ancient astronomical observatory. However, during the Greeks' inhabitancy, the site was the focus of political discussion, not astronomy. These discussions were held every nine days and required the involvement of no less than 6,000 residents of Athens, although it is thought that the site could actually hold more than 20,000 individuals. Who built Nix? Or indeed, the inexplicable polygonal masonry present in its boundary walls, with blocks similar in size to that of the fortress of Sacsayhuaman. The question is, why has this site seemingly been overlooked, not only by academia, but missed by the majority of alternative research? This absence of research, we feel, is clear proof of academia's efficiency to stifle free thought. We suspect that their motives focus on protecting investments, to retain book sales in regards to their apparent accurate explanations of the Greeks and Romans. 
This requires the concealment of anything which contradicts this tale of events. Concealing features which would inevitably ignite unanswerable questions within the viewer's mind. It is undoubtedly an astonishing wall, surrounding an equally astonishing ruin. A place we find highly compelling. Over a hundred years ago, a curious discovery was made in a town now named after this Upart, Rockwell within Texas. An ancient wall was unearthed, and although it was clearly of an artificial nature, its possible age predictably made a number of people in the academic world deny its artificial origins in favor of a far less likely scenario involving natural formation. Although magnetic exploration suggested that the rock wall had been where it lay for over 100,000 years, its origins have been heavily debated ever since its initial discovery. In 1852, farmers in Texas were digging a well when they discovered the wall. Conservative estimates have placed its creation some 100,000 years ago. Yet now, many believe it to actually be an antediluvian relic left by a now-lost civilization some 200 to 400,000 years ago. Dr. John Geisman of the University of Texas, Dallas, tested the rocks as part of a History Channel documentary, giving credence to the denial of its artificial origins, suggesting they formed where they were, claiming that they were all magnetized in the same way. This tremendous age has led many to believe in modern paradigm, to deny a man-made origin, as this does to corroborate with the Bering Strait theory and currently upheld timelines in regards to evolution. However, there are others in similar fields who have found curious characteristics of the wall which do indeed suggest artificial origins. Geologist James Shelton, for example, and Harvard's architect John Lindsay have focused on its unique design features, including architectural elements, archways, lintel portals, and square doorway and window openings, which all suggest not only artificial creation, but functionality for humans, which nature would simply not create. The depth or past height of the wall is also an impressive legacy. The family of T.U. Wade, who moved to the area and initially made the discovery, dug to a depth of 40 feet to try and find the bottom of the wall. This excavation, however, was abandoned without finding the bottom. Years later, in 1949, Mr. Sanders of Fort Worth took up the baton and continued excavational exploration of the wall finding a number of megalithic stones at considerable depth and weighing several tons. After bringing them to the surface, mysterious pictographs were found upon them, further supporting the thesis of artificial origin. In addition, curious metal rings of modern composition were found embedded in rocks, suggesting the presence of lost technology. It would appear that the wall is indeed an antediluvian relic, one possibly submerged and subsequently buried in ancient sediment during the Great Flood. Modern studies have found that the wall is in fact six stories tall and 20 miles in length, with a number of individuals now attributing the wall to a lost civilization of giants due to its inexplicable nature. Quote, it is good when examples like rock wall appear that test our abilities and cause us to question basic Newtonian mechanistic assumptions that have not been modified for over 150 years. Physics had to abandon this approach at the turn of the century, opting instead for relativity and quantum mechanics in order to further their understanding of matter and the universe," said James Shelton, geologist from New Orleans. It is a relic which we find highly compelling.